and I would like to request you now to please light uh, the lamp as we mark the auspicious inauguration and also as this lamp also symbolizes the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. May I request uh, the Honorable Minister to please light the lamp. Thank you, sir. And as we further extend uh, greetings on behalf of everyone present here to the Honourable Minister, I would like to request uh, Shri R. K. Kulshreshth, the Director General, uh, RDSO, to please uh, accord him a floral welcome. We're also glad that we have the guidance and the support of Shri A. K. Mittal, the Chairman, Railway Board, and. Uh, once again, Mr. Kulshreshtra, welcoming him. Thank you, sir. And uh, now to express uh, our greetings to Shri R.K. Kulshreshtra, I would like to invite here Mr. J. Sundi, the additional Director General, Adhyaso, to please uh, present the bouquet to him. And now I would like to request uh, the Honorable Minister, Shri Suresh Prabhuji, for uh, his thoughts and his guidance to this August gathering. Chairman Railway Board, DG IDSO, all other distinguished guests and friends. Any organization, and certainly an organization as big as railways and as important as railways in India, we have to constantly keep modernizing, keep learning new things, use them in our day-to-day -day operations. And to do that, we have been organizing quite a few roundtables, dealing with several subjects. So right from environment to human resource development to many things. So one of the important ones in that series of roundtables is the one that is currently organized and that is the technology one. Railway globally are also evolving and constantly upgrading. We in India we need to learn from that, use this technology in our operations and to do that we need lot of participation from global technology players. So first of all, welcome all of you who have come from, I think 60, 64 people have come from different parts of the world, as well as others from India. And I'm sure this interaction will go a long way in learning about what each one of us are doing and how to integrate that into railways. One part is obviously the known technologies today, how to integrate them into railway operations. So as the Chairman of the Railway Board has already mentioned, we like our members are also here. So each member can sit with that group of companies and group of known technologies and find out how we can use them into data operations. Ideas will have to play a key role in ensuring that the system will take care of that and try to do it in shortage possible. So I think firstly, we must therefore set some deadlines and in such shortest possible time, we should try to conclude how we should proceed about it. So maybe this is the month of May. So I think by June end or something, we should try to first of all decide how we'll take it forward. What technology, etc., is a responsibility of the individual members as well as the professionals. But best known technologies, how to integrate them We'll have to decide about how to move forward, not that by June end we'll be able to get all technologies, but a process of moving on. That decision we can take, how we should move forward. Otherwise, we'll just, discussion is not academic alone, it's academic discussion leading to certain very concrete decision. And I was just going through it, that there are all kinds of operations that we are indulging, as well as the challenges we face are already uh, dealing with, uh, already are part of this technology round table. So I think we'll, that's the first stage we can do and very quickly we can do that. 
So secondly, as you can see, and this is particularly for my friends from abroad, I must start to tell you that for a long time, we have not been investing into railways much, as much was needed for the railways. And as the chairman of the railway board said, we lost out somewhere because we did not invest enough. Now, in the last two, three years, we have really stepped up our investment and we have a clear-cut five-year roadmap. And I think, as I always believe that these five years we should invest, but we are committed about $140 billion plus. But in the next five years, we should double this investment. We should try to put it something like $300 billion into the railways for the next five years. And then we can say, having invested about close to $450 billion into the next 10 years, we could have at least come to a level wherein the global technologies and something which is happening globally can happen in India. But knowing this investment plan, I would request all the global technology players that you should look at Indian market very seriously. It is not just another destination wherein we can import technology and use them into the operation. It's a great opportunity to co-develop technologies. So known technologies, how they should be used, is something, as I said, in the next two months, we'll create a roadmap and understand how we can integrate. But while we do that, the next generation of technology development must happen as a co-developer with India. We should try to develop those technology with Indian counterparts, maybe in private sector, or with the government, and we can support that initiative by ensuring that this co-developed technologies, cutting edge ones, take into account the emerging needs of railways, not just in India, globally. How can they be made and developed in India? Made in India is one part, but how can we co-develop technologies in India? Development will precede manufacturing. So if you develop it and co-develop it together, we'll all benefit because India is a growing market. And that's why I was giving you these numbers, that in the next 10 years time, we'll be investing that much amount of money into the railways, which would demand your real serious attention to the Indian market. And therefore, I would feel that after 10 years, if you take the next five year cycle, I don't want to give the numbers, it has no meaning, we can give any number. But if you, I'm very sure that if you go back 15 years from now, the next five year cycle after 10 years, you'll see that India would have invested in the railways the maximum more than any other country in the world. And therefore, look at the seriousness and therefore you must start to look at co-developing those technology Indian market. And to do that, I think IDS also must start working on a framework for this. How can we facilitate that to happen? Because today, what we are doing in IDS so essentially is to find out the known technology, how can they be used in India? What will be the vendor certification program, how the technology can be vetted into Indian atmosphere. That is one part. But if you are doing something different and trying to co-develop technology, it's a complete paradigm shift, completely new thinking, and therefore we have to create a new architecture about enabling such large-scale investments into new cutting edge technologies in India. And at that time, I can assure you, India will be a destination of technology development but a market will definitely be in India, but also we can tap the overseas market from India. And I think that is something we should also start thinking about it today. So co-development of a technology should also be on the agenda, if not immediately, but something we should try to do. And therefore, today we work on first phase using the known technology in Indian context. Second phase will be this. As we know, globally, the defense being the largest recipient of investments, like Pentagon, has issued the largest investment. Even now the second largest economy, China, is investing huge amounts of money into defense. So obviously the investment that goes into defense, into the basic research, the spin-off benefits are the other sectors. So defense has been the original investor of new technology invention, and the other sectors are captured from that. For example, all, all we know, even the internet wouldn't have been developed at all in the world if the Pentagon had not developed it for their own internal communication mechanism. So we have seen so many, even saw the toilet and many things that happened globally, the origin was in defense. I would be venturing to say this, but it should not be surprising, in the next decade or so, after maybe 10-15 years, you will see 
the investments made in railways will be the one which will the spin up benefit will come into the other sectors because railway will be the largest recipient of investment particularly in india and that railway may not necessarily be the same kind of railway that we see today the rolling stock may be different the tracks may be different there cannot be railway without track that is also possible as some of them are trying to work on that but that therefore railway would be the recipient of the largest investment in terms of basic research and that's what we should aim at and for that again i think we we'll have to work with other organizations in the country and try to create a framework where railways will be receiving it for the own benefit but other sectors can immense the benefit for example we develop our own waterless toilets in railways who will be benefiting the whole country will benefit whole world will benefit but we will be doing it for railways because railway will be the largest market for the toilets and therefore making it possible in such context is be something very interesting and therefore we should try to work on that i am very sure that some of our immediate concerns of safety of speed of putting infrastructure at a much higher space by using even some geo special technologies we are using now drones and we are doing others but i think how can we put that high technology we want to have 40000 rolling stock which the, the we want to modernize them in a shortest possible time so all of this our immediate needs what railway has is something which we will also put on table and i think that again with the known technologies we can match that and try to take it forward but as we do this we should not forget the side of what needs to be done at a second phase as well so i think this is a very good beginning i was uh, very happy that of course the dg and the chairman railway board and the member themselves put the weight behind it the dg of um, ideas has put it one mr jaiswal also personally put in lot of efforts into this i think this is something which is a team work and i want that before all the participants from india from abroad go back to their respective homes i think if you can take a concrete step in understanding how we want to move forward that it will take obviously time to decide about who will do what and etc but at least we must have a clear cut road map before the conference ends about what will be the next step that will take to ensure that the technology integration technology absorption in india about something which professionally we choose it is not something we should not go by the name we should not go by any other consideration except by finding out what is best suitable to india the least cost technology which has a long term tenure as well as the possibility of upgradation that is something which you try to do and the last point is something which is very important is sometimes we can focus on one set of technologies and therefore that particular part can be addressed very effectively but if you look at railway operation as a whole if it does not fit into the entire operation in a holistic way it might create a problem so therefore we are separately working and uh, the member staff actually i don't know whether you have made the presentation about it or not is about the enterprise resource planning which is completely digitalizing the railway operation i think that again should not be it should be the guiding principle and we should not lose sight of that in terms of that is our ultimate goal how do you fit in and chip in everything in relation to that so i think we must have the big picture we must also address not just only big picture but also look at a specific areas of concern and then i think we should try to take it forward i think again mr goel worked out on a very interesting model that day of digitalizing our entire supply chain i think that's something again will help a great deal but i think all of these different different initiatives that railways are already taking and some of them are already under implementation we should not lose sight of the fact that they are also building blocks for the overall development of railways i think otherwise they should not again go waste so i think that again is some presentation we should try to give it to all the audience so that they will also understand where the railways are trying to move in terms of some of these initiatives so i think welcome you back into the railway family some of you may all not been participating regularly with the new approach that we have so i'm sure we'll all work together and as the chairman has personally is going to monitor to make sure that all of these things happen so the urgent concern something which we need so quickly like say tag uh, fracture detection machines or new tag laying machines or high 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 end 
signaling systems that we need and Mr. Singh is again going to be working on that. Some of these areas will be of great importance to us and sense of urgency in that so that we can do it like this. So I think in short we need to do ABC analysis about what is needed immediately, what is needed in the short term and then what is a little bit long term plan. Again to integrate that into our overall vision and that's something which again will be very important. So technology development, technology integration, technology absorption all are going to be on the table and we, we must work on each one of them. So thank you very much. Congratulations to each one of you. I'm sorry I couldn't be here in the morning. I was gone, not in Delhi. I straight came from the airport and the flight also got delayed. So apologies for coming late. Thank you very much. Now I would like to request you, sir, to kindly release the book of abstracts. This is, in fact, a compilation of the various research papers that are these are research papers which are being presented in these uh, in the course of these two days Thank you, sir. And as we express our gratitude and appreciation, thanks to the Honorable Minister, I would uh, once again like to request uh, Shri R. K. Kulshreshra to please uh, present the memento to the Honorable Minister. And also thanking uh, Chairman Bailey Board, uh, thanking uh, Shri Mittal. Thank you, sir.